this is what is happening now. I know that you are in repentance services across the entire nation and probably globally also. But uh, the Lord has presented a very huge vehicle. And a very huge vehicle that are very big. I don't know whether they are probably 30 or 40 meters high, tall. The tires of that vehicle are very, very huge. A huge vehicle, a glorious vehicle, a pure white glorious vehicle, but tires are very huge. They seem to be like 30 to 40 meters high, high when they are standing. Very huge tires, as you can imagine. And those tires are quite a few. It's not only one set or four. There are quite a few tires, and that's a huge vehicle. And this vehicle is through a land. And in that land, there is total drought. Total, total, no rain until the soil has become reddish. The soil has become reddish, and there is not even one leaf, one leaf, not even one leaf has germinated, has shot up, has grown on the soil. So the soil is total reddish soil, orangish reddish soil. And uh, the, this vehicle is being driven by the two mightiest prophets of the Lord, and the church is in this vehicle, but they is passing through one of the biggest droughts probably in the history of uh, this land, and, and there is no rain. It's dry, and there is no rain, and there's not even one leaf, and that vehicle is soldiering on very powerfully, passing through it with so much dust jumping up bring him up, starting up into the sky. And uh, that is what the Lord has shown me again. This huge vehicle is climbing, is going, is going everywhere, is going on the plains, climbing on the hills, and there is one single leaf, one leaf, seen one little leaf. The way you see a leaf has grown on the soil, not even one leaf. It is total, total, total dry. And this vehicle is being driven by the two most dreadful prophets of Yahweh. Now, let me say the following. I'm going to read scripture here for you to develop a complete understanding of why you need to repent very, very seriously and severely before the Lord. Now, the greatest fear that the two servants of the Lord who have been walking in this land, you see them in the meeting, you have recorded them severally, so all of you have had the opportunity to see the two prophets of the Lord in this land and in other countries where they've been revealed. So the greatest fear that we have had is that we always feared that in the midst of this great love and blessing and healing and wonders and revival, that the Lord Yahweh would one time, might one time choose to finally, in Swahili they say, kuatambulisha. In Swahili then I'll say in English, mara nyingi sana, tumekuwa na hofu na kuogopa sana, ya kwamba, tanya hili upendo, uponyaji kuu, ni ujiza na maajabu, ambazo mungu, mwenyezi mungu Jehova metumia wanabi wake wawili kulete Kenya hapa. Wanabi wawili ambaye njini wenye mawapiga picha, kumashika kwenye bruninga zenu, eh? mukajua ya kwamba kuna wanabi wakali wawili wanapembea hapa, nchini Kenya. Lakini tumekuwa na uoga sana mara nyingi ya kwamba siku moja buwana kalisema gafna bilvu ya kwamba wakati umefika ya kuatambulisha na hiyo uoga imekuwa ya kwamba anaweza kuatambulisha kwa njia kali mbaya sana ya kutisha mno let me say it in english now that as people record these two prophets in the meeting they take cameras and record them they, they see them walking together one is walking this direction one is the other direction sometimes they record them celebrating together one is slightly taller than the other the greatest fear that we've always had 
is that the Lord might one day decide to finally say enough is enough. This is the hour when I now need to introduce who these two prophets are to this land. And in a most fearful way, we have always feared that he can, he can decide to introduce them in a very dreadful way, the most dreadful way, in the severest way ever, that everybody may fear them for it. That there may be no black men again, no thunder, no money, no lies written against them in the press. That is the greatest fear that these two servants of the Lord have always had. They have always known that their mission is their mission is very, very fierce. Their mission is to encounter the Antichrist and the false prophets and combat them. Combat them at the time when the church has been taken away. So that mission calls for warriors. It's a warrior that has not yet been revealed. Because for now, all you are seeing is the goodness, the people who are the blind seeing, the deaf hearing, the mute speaking, but human flesh, the way we know human flesh, there can be complacency and familiarity. And that's why we vote that one time the Lord might decide that, you know, this is now the time to introduce who these two prophets are and why they are called the mightiest, most dreadful prophets ever sent to the earth. And that the law might decide to introduce them in the most fearful way that will everybody to fear them and run away from them forever. Again, I see a huge view. And the two prophets of the law are driving that vehicle. And the church is inside. And that vehicle is going through a terrain and land. Not even a single leaf has grown on that land. Talk to dry. Total drought. Total shut up. And the soil, right to the state, is kind of reddish, orange like this, and dusty. The Bible says very clearly, it says here in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, and also Second Chronicles chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 13, Second Chronicles 7 from 13, he says, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a place among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, he does not say will begin to blackmail the two prophets' father. He says, will humble themselves, not blackmail God, but humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn to their wicked ways. Then it repent us. Repent. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Again, I repeat, I read Second Chronicles 7, 13 to 14, 13 and 14. When I shut up the heaven so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people, and if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves, not blackmail God, but humble themselves, and pray, and seek my faith, and turn to their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, and I will give their sins, And will heal their land. Chapter 18, blessed people, verses 7 to 9. 7 and 8 is sufficient. It says, If at any time I announce that a nation or a kingdom 
needs to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed. And it's uprooted, torn down, and destroyed. The way he's announcing it today. And it's that nation I warned, repent of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. Blessed people, repent, 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 repent. And again, when you go before the Lord to repent, please repent. Please repent. Repent. Then you repent. Repent to the black man that this land committed upon the Lord. The slander and magic. The character assassination. When the Lord only brought righteousness. He only brought holiness. He only brought the kingdom of God, the stars of heaven. He only brought the healing of the cripples, the blind, the deaf, the mute, paralytic, living conditions, cancers, tumors, leprosy, HIV, blood conditions, diabetes, everything else. Repent, Kenya. Please repent and genuinely repent. In Swahili, they say, Yakumanisha. Tubu, Toba Yakumanisha. Because now I've shown you what is ahead. Repent that it may not happen to this land. The Lord might introduce these prophets to you in the most dreadful and the most fearful manner that will cause all of you to run away from them forever. Repent. The Messiah is coming. Repent. I have seen the Messiah coming. Please repent that all of you may not perish over this land. Repent and return to Jesus. Be born again and be holy. Receive the Holy Spirit. Be baptized. Repent, Kenya. (laughs) 